everybody, my name is Michelle and today I'm going to tell you about 10 books that I think you absolutely need to read. If you know me a little bit, then you probably know that I love reading a lot. This entire channel is all about books and reading. I have lots of videos with book recommendations, books that I love, but I thought it would be interesting to narrow it down to a list of 10 books that I just think that you absolutely need to read in your life. Books that are, in my opinion, the absolute best, that are so well written, that are so beautiful, that contain important messages and important stories. Basically books that are so insanely good that I think everybody should read them, that I love so much and that I cannot stop talking about because they are all so important to me in different ways. So that is what's going to happen in this video. I'm going to tell you all about 10 books that you absolutely need to read and yeah let's just get started and then I'm going to tell you all about them. The first book is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This book takes place during World War II in occupied France. It is about two sisters named Vianne and Isabel who lead very different lives and have very different experiences throughout the war. Vianne is the older sister and she has a daughter of her own so she has to be quite careful in surviving and taking care of her child. And Isabel is the younger sister who is quite adventurous and who wants to do nothing more than to join the resistance and to help people. Throughout the book we follow their life stories and it is so beautifully written that I think you should absolutely read it. It is one of my all-time favorite books. What I love about it is that this book portrays the grand of the situation, of the war going on. It portrays it so well. It is very emotional and the stakes are naturally very high because there is so much danger going on and bad things and you feel so much for both Vienne and Isabel. And that is also something that the Nightingale portrays so well, the relationship between these sisters and their two very different lives. How they have very different experiences throughout the war but how they are both very brave in their own way and how much they actually love each other and yeah, it is just beautiful and I love to read about it. It is very emotional. This book is just written in a way that you want to finish the entire thing in one sitting, which is basically what I did. I read it in the course of two days. I could not put it down. It is absolutely beautiful. I think everybody should read it. The next book I think you should absolutely read is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book tells the story of fictional actress Evelyn Hugo, who was very famous during the 1950s and 1960s during the sort of golden time of Hollywood. Evelyn was most notorious for having seven husbands and in present day she's now an older woman and she tells her life's story to a journalist named Monique Grant. Why Evelyn is telling her story now and what the importance is of her story is something that you have to experience for yourself. But this book is again absolutely beautiful and what I like most about this one is that it's told in such a realistic and raw way. But at the same time it's also very glamorous and beautiful. You really feel the atmosphere atmosphere of the Hollywood scene in the 1950s and 1960s. What I like about it is that Evelyn is definitely not a perfect character. She's very very flawed. She does a lot of things that I don't always agree with but somehow you still care for her so much and it feels like she is a real person, like a real actress that you can google or watch films of. That is sort of the sad thing about this book that you cannot actually watch Evelyn Hugo's films because she doesn't really exist but the book is so well written that you think she does and that is what makes it so amazing. This book is also about people judging you and having opinions about you and how it can be very hard to be in the public eye and how you have to keep some parts of you a secret in order to achieve what you want in this world. I just feel like it's very true and again realistic and that is why I love it so much. Also that it's so glamorous and it is so much fun to read. At the same time it is also again emotional and that is just why I love this book so much. And again, this is one of my all-time favorites. The next book I want to talk about is Educated by Tara Westover. And this is actually a non-fiction book. It tells the true story of Tara who grows up amongst a family of very strictly religious survivalists. So they live off the grid. They think that the apocalypse is coming very soon, that they have to be ready for the end of the world and that they have to prepare, that they have to be self-sufficient and they don't trust anything that is sort of, you know, amongst society. So they are not going to school, they don't go to doctors. Tara doesn't even have a birth certificate until she is like nine years old. So this is a very peculiar family and then the book is about Tara growing up there but also eventually going to university and finding out about the world apart from her uh, very interesting upbringing. This is a book you absolutely need to read because it's such an important and also a 
very interesting story. You don't hear stories like this very often. Not a lot of people lead lives like this and Tara tells it in such an engaging and interesting way. What I also admire is that from the beginning she tells that no one's memory is perfect and that it's completely possible that she remembers certain things differently than her family does and that wherever possible she has tried to verify her version of events with other members of her family or mem people who were around uh, during the time. Even though this is a non-fiction book she really builds up on the story. It feels almost like it is fiction even though you know it isn't but it is such an engaging writing style. She definitely has talent with writing and it is just I think it is important to read stories like this and to know what is going on in the world how certain families live and how they choose to live. And it is so weird to see some things that I find very normal that Tara didn't have in her childhood. And yeah, it is just beautifully written. And again, one book that I love very much. Then a book that is quite a bit different and that is My Sister Rosa by Justine larbalis J. And this one is about a boy named Che who is 17 years old and along with his parents and his younger sister Rosa, he travels a lot around the world. And at the beginning of this book, they are going to live in New York City. The thing is though that Che his younger sister Rosa is actually very different and Che suspects that she is a sociopath because Rosa enjoys manipulating people, she enjoys hurting people and animals but she's also very clever about it and to everybody else apart from Che she appears as a perfect little girl uh, who is very sweet and does nothing wrong. So Che takes it as his responsibility to protect Rosa from the world but most importantly protect the world from Rosa. This book is one of my favorites again because it is so intensely creepy but in the best possible way. Rosa creeps you out from the beginning but it is so interesting to read about and it really gives you all the feels uh, and it's just you want to keep on reading to find out what she's going to do next, how she's going to hide it, uh, what is going to happen. You are so scared throughout the book because you know as does Jay that Rosa is capable of a lot of awful things and you never know when she's going to strike next and what she is going to do and that makes this book uh, definitely a page turner because she just wants to keep on reading, find out what's going to happen next. It is quite an underrated book in my opinion. I don't hear enough people talking about it. It is absolutely amazing. I love it so much again and yeah it is one of my all-time favorites again as is the case with all of these books on this list. If you want to be properly creeped out then read My Sister Rosa because you will love it. Next up I have Where the Crawl Dead Sing by Delia Owens and this is about a young girl named Kaya. It follows her throughout her life. Kaya lives alone in the marsh which is sort of like a swamp. The story also takes place in the 1950s and the 1960s. It is about her growing up quite lonely and about her being very one with nature and very much enjoying the nature that the marsh has to offer. But then at the beginning of the book a young man named Chase Andrews is found dead and Kaya is the main suspect. So this one again is uh, a bit of historical fiction. It takes place in the 1950s and 1960s and what I especially love about this book is how well it portrays the pains of loneliness. It is a lot about Kaya feeling abandoned and feeling lonely. You really feel for her so so much. I just wanted to like grab into the book and give her a hug because it makes you feel all the feelings so intensely and of course it is sort of sad to read about those things but it is also very good because it really makes you care and I think a book is amazing if it makes you care like that. Something else that is very beautiful about this book is the description of the marsh and the nature surrounding Kaya and how much she loves it and how at home she feels throughout it. And it is also about people judging you and keeping you out from society because that is sort of what happens with Kaya and the rest of her village. Uh, they don't really trust her. So it is about how judgment can impact a life and how much it can hurt. So it is full of beautiful messages and painful truths and it's just amazingly written, so well executed. What I also like is that this book sort of combines a lot of different genres because it is of course a murder mystery. There is a murder, but it is again historical fiction. It is also a romance story. It has basically everything that you want from a book and trust me, it will make you feel 
so many emotions and you will love it. Then I also have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a high fantasy epic adventure. It is all about a man named Quote who is telling his life story. And his life story is quite interesting. He has an interesting upbringing, an interesting life. It is very unusual and it contains a lot of magic and adventure. The Name of the Wind is the first book in a series and in this one specifically it is about Quote trying to find his way to a very prestigious magic school and trying to be uh, to be taught at that magic school. So this is one of the best high fantasy books I've ever read. It is so well written. It is long, like it is a big book and sometimes it can be a bit slow because it really takes its time with the details of the story and the characters and everything that is happening. But in my opinion it is so so worth it because it is just so well written that even though it is a high fantasy book and of course it is not very realistic it feels like it really exists. It feels like you're there in the story with quote. And that is just something that is very uh, impressive if a writer can achieve that. There is so much happening and it's definitely, well, it's not like Game of Thrones, but I feel like if you like Game of Thrones, then you will also like this book because there are some similarities in sort of how the story is quite slow and takes its time. The only difference is that like the name of the wind has a lot less characters than the Game of Thrones books. And yeah, I can be short about it. It's just an excellent high fantasy adventure. And I think a lot of people will really love it and that's why I think everybody should read it. Then I would like to talk about The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This book is magical realism, which means that it takes place in our world, but there's actually also magic at stake. In particular, it's about this magical night circus uh, that appears only at night without a warning that is very, very magical and popular. But The Night Circus is actually the project of two magicians who are in sort of a uh, duel with each other. The Night Circus is one of the most magical books you will ever read. And what this book does specifically well is the atmosphere. It describes the Night Circus in so much detail and it feels like you're there. You can smell the food, you can see all the artists and all the acts and you feel the magic and the beautiful atmosphere around you. I want to go to the Night Circus so badly and I'm so sad that it actually doesn't exist in real life because it sounds amazing. And when it's also beautiful that there is some real magic involved and that is just like, it feels so amazing. It is like a fairy tale but even better somehow. This is again a book with a lot of different characters. You see it from different points of view, also in different points of time. It is just, I don't know, it is not really an adventure. I wouldn't call it that. It's more like an experience, a beautiful, beautiful experience full of magic and whimsical elements. I think this one is definitely a masterpiece. It is so beautifully written. And that is why I think like a lot of people should really read it because it's just, you're missing out if you haven't read it yet. Another book you should most definitely read is Sleeping Giants by Silva Nouvelle. This is again the first book in a trilogy and this one is actually sci-fi. It starts off in our world in our time but it is about a girl named Rose Franklin and when she is young she finds a mysterious huge sort of robotic hand. Years later when she is an adult she is involved in a project surrounding this huge hand and there are probably other robotic parts as well and it's sort of her mission to get all these parts together and see what this sort of robot actually is. This is one of my favorite sci-fi books and one of my favorite sci-fi series. If you have never read sci-fi before and you're intimidated by the genre, then this is the perfect one to begin with because it is sci-fi, but it is very approachable sci-fi. What is also special about this book series is that it is told in the format of files. So all the chapters are in the format of interviews or journal entries or articles or whatever. It is all told in the format of files and this is, this is a concept that some other books do as well, but I think the Sleeping Giant series or the Themis Files series as it is called does it so well because even though it sounds like when a story is being told in files it can be impersonal, this one feels so vibrant, like all the characters and their personalities just are so vibrant and so out there. You feel like you get to know them very quickly and you come to care for them very quickly and then also it is just epic. 
The entire story is so epic and it keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time. Also, these books are not very big, not with the entire series. So again, if you've never read sci-fi, you're sort of intimidated by it. Please read this series because it is so easy to get into and I will promise you, you will love it. Next up, I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mendel. And this is actually a dystopian book, but it is probably not the kind of dystopian you are expecting. Station Eleven is about the apocalypse. It is about a virus that has killed almost the entire population and the people that are now left have to sort of survive and see, uh, yeah, get along in a world where most people aren't there anymore. So that also means that there's no electricity and no communication and just everything has sort of fallen apart and entire society, just the entire world has collapsed. But what makes this book so interesting is that it's not really about the apocalypse itself. It is not about surviving the apocalypse. It's about life after the apocalypse. So we follow characters 20 years after the original, you know, virus broke out. One of the main characters is a girl named Kirsten who travels around with this company who performs plays uh, to sort of keep some of the, you know, history of most importantly Shakespeare alive. But there is so much more to the story than that. We follow a lot of different characters, both from before the apocalypse, like in uh, our normal world, and also from after the apocalypse, so when society has collapsed. What makes this book so interesting is that it really makes you think about our own lives in our own world and how you would react when something like this would happen. So if like society is not there anymore, there's no electricity, basically all inventions are just not really a thing anymore. There are no airplanes, no cars, no everything. How would you deal with that and how would you survive? Because it made me appreciate everything around me, like modern society. It made me appreciate it so much. I don't know how I would cope if I were in the situation of the characters of this book. So that is something that is very interesting about it. And then also it is just like so interesting to read about more like life and people and not really about the excitement of the apocalypse itself. So this is such an interesting story and it is so well done. Um, and yeah, it is dystopian, but such a unique kind of a dystopian that I think just like you should read it because it is so interesting and it will keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. And then for my final book that I think you should definitely read, uh, I have The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. This is again a book that, um, well, it takes place during two timelines. The first one is during the First World War and it follows a woman named Eve who is actually a spy and goes undercover during the First World War. And then the second timeline takes place shortly after World War II and it follows a girl named Charlie. Charlie is pregnant but she's not married which is of course not uh, accepted in her like rich family but she actually goes to Europe to find out where her cousin Rose has gone because her cousin Rose was one of her best friends but she hasn't heard from her since the war has ended so she wants to find out what has happened and in her search for Rose she actually finds this weird woman named Eve and that is where these stories come together. This is one of the best books when it comes to historical women being so strong and so brave. I loved both Eve and Charlie so much but in very different ways. They are both clever, they both take risks, they both are very brave but they have very different life stories. And throughout this book it is so interesting to find out what happened to Eve during the First World War whilst also being on this search with Eve and Charlie for her cousin. So the two stories come together even more throughout the book and it is just, oh, it is so beautifully written and so beautifully done. I feel like this is again a book that has not gotten enough love and attention yet. So please read it because it's just, it is so well done. It is again a definite page turner and I just love every single thing about it. Every single character, everything that happens. Of course, because it is about world wars, it is again emotional and it can be quite heavy and like there can be some heavy subjects but it is just definitely worth it because it is so beautifully dealt with and I just love love these characters I cannot get enough of them so if you love world war stories please read the Alice Network it is just amazing and a book again that I think everybody needs to read so this was it for 10 books that I think everybody must read in their lives. I love all of them so much in case you couldn't tell but I think they are all brilliant and amazing in their own ways and there are a lot of different genres among these books and they are all very different but they are all amazing and just definitely worth 
the read. And again, I cannot recommend them enough. They are amazing and I have nothing but good words for all of these books. So please read them. You will love them all. I am sure of it. And yeah, that is just... I cannot emphasize it enough. You absolutely have to read these books. But this was it then for this video and I really hope you liked it and that hopefully it was useful to you and that you now have some new book recommendations that you might find interesting uh, to read. Please let me know down in the comments a book that you think everybody absolutely needs to read because I can always use more book recommendations because again I love reading so much. And then if you like this video maybe go subscribe or give it a thumbs up of course if you want to. As always I would really appreciate that and then hopefully I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye!